Welcome to This Week in Morton County. I'm your host, Russell Mulkyber. Our guest this week is Tom Yost. Tom, welcome to the show. Hey, glad to be here. Thanks, Tom, for, thanks for inviting me. Well, it's good having you. You are uh, born and raised here. Born in Berkeley Springs, 1949. And give us a little bit, let's spend some time on your life. Your parents were... Uh, your, your Tink and Dot Yost, they ran a little mom and pop grocery store in North Berkeley. Dick and who? No, it was Tink. Tink. Tink and Dot. Dorothy, but they called her Dot. Okay. What's Tink's real name? Cleo. Cleo. But That's why they called him Tink. Okay. Where was, the, where was the store? It was in North Berkeley, right next to the Board of Education. A little, it's where the, they eventually, my mom sold it when my father died, and they converted it into a kindergarten. That's when the kindergarten first started, and they converted it into a kindergarten. And then they eventually expanded it into a, it's now a computer uh, lab for the Morgan County Schools. Okay. Did, was that the neighborhood where your house was? Two houses away, and, and I still live there. Still live there. My uh, my house was built in 1910 by my great grandfather. What um, you went to school here? Went to school in Morgan County, yeah. And then where did you go? Then uh, at uh, graduated at uh, age 17 in three months. I knew I had the military obligation coming up, and uh, I went ahead and joined the Air Force. Left two weeks later in June of. 1966. Stayed in for four years. Were you in Vietnam? I was a Vietnam veteran. Yep. Give me the nutshell on what you think of the PBS Vietnam piece. I actually watched it all, and uh, it has some very. Uh, I learned some things. Decisions were made that were uh, very heartbreaking. Uh, about the president's made decisions strictly based on political. Nothing about the troops, nothing about, they really didn't care about the Vietnamese people. Uh, it was strictly political to get reelected. And that starts with Kennedy, who I, at that point, really uh, liked. And a, like a month before he actually was assassinated, he made the decision to keep the troops in Vietnam. And uh, that's the first I'd heard about when Ken Burns brought that to to uh, the forefront. It's pretty heartbreaking. Did you vote for Kennedy? I was too young to You're vote. You're too young to vote then right. at that point. Um, and from the 10, I'm just, I'm in number yeah, five. Go, go I, haven't, I haven't watched the whole thing. Uh, I'm in number five. Uh, you learned from it, you said. Did it change your thought about Vietnam at all? Well, the fact is that there's nothing I can do about it. It's over. It's done. Uh, I did my part. I was a crew chief on a C-130 aircraft, and we flew into uh, situations, pick up troops, take troops in. We'd land on dirt strips. I'm proud of my service. I did the very best I could. Worked 12 hours a day, seven days a week. And uh, I had a brother in the Marine Corps. He was older than I. Uh, my next oldest brother was in the Navy, CBs. He helped build runways in Vietnam. And when it come my turn, well, I certainly had to go. I couldn't, so that's why I signed up. After you came back, how long did you spend there? Actually in country, probably, uh, I was actually stationed in the Philippine Islands at Clark Air Force Base. And we repaired the C-130s, then we flew into Vietnam not, I, I was not a pilot, but I was crew chief working on the aircraft. And we flew 200 hours off, 17, 18 days, then back to Clark at Philippines. When we went back, we always took a load of uh, killed in action. The whole, the whole aircraft was full. And I can remember as a kid, young kid, I'd go back, look at the name tags and see if anybody I knew. And uh, by the time I got, to, we'd get to Clark Field and would uh, inspect the aircraft in great detail and get it all prepared and go back in. So that was a year and a half of that. When you came back, uh, what did you do? I started a rock and roll band. Here in Berkeley Springs? Here in Berkeley Springs. What was the name of it? Uh, well, it's kind of a crazy name. It's called the Rock Bottom Express. 
The Rock Bottom Express. The Rock Bottom Express. <clears throat> yeah. I had a band before I left. It's called The Outcast. And it was a garage band. We were pretty good, real good. But at that point, with the draft, we all knew we had stuff we had to take care of. And so we disbanded, and all of the outcasts went into military service. And with the hope of starting the band, when we got out, no problems, everything would be okay, and we would be a successful. And we would have been, except life gets in the way of things, and we had to disband. Uh, what was your instrument? A bass guitar and sang, yeah. And that was both for the outcast and rock bottom? The outcast, I, I started playing the tenor saxophone, and then I moved the bass guitar, yeah. How, uh, how big did you make it? Did you make it to Winchester? Yeah, I made it to Winchester. There used to be a big club in Martinsburg called the Ponderosa. That was a famous club, and we would play down there. I went to Romney, Petersburg, up in there. We were like treated like the Beatles because, <laughs> you know, they, that's the first rock and roll band ever came to town. That's what we played, a lot of Beatles tunes. And the Beatles were your inspiration. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was definitely my inspiration, yeah. All right, so you played rock and roll. What was your life's work? After that? Yeah. Okay. Well, I got married, had to provide for a family, and my uh, stuff that I learned in the Air Force came in handy because I got a call one day from the Air National Guard in Martinsburg, which I didn't even know there was an Air National Guard in Martinsburg. I'd have probably joined it before I joined the Air Force, but at that point I didn't even know it. So they called me and they they said, Mr. Yost, we understand you're a crew chief on a C-130 aircraft, which at that point the war was winding. It was boom coming down. And they had these C-130s that they uh, had received from the Air Force, the National Guard. So it was an update for them. And they asked me if I'd like to come down and work on C-130s. And I looked at my little girl and my wife, and I thought, hmm. Well, it was a good job. Put food in their stomach, and I said yes, and I went. And I stayed. I must have liked it because I stayed 31 years. And you you retired from them. And I retired. When was that? When was that? Uh, 2001. All right. So it's been 16 years. What what have you been uh, doing in your retirement? Well, I went up to Timber Ridge School and helped with uh, tutor kids that were on the wrong path. And, Tried to give them some life experiences, how to how to stay straight. Did that for five years, one-on-one -on -one tutoring. And since that, I just I help uh, with the food pantry up at our church. That's something I'm very proud of. We give out food once a month to families in need in Morgan County. And uh, I, the week before that, I go down here to the Moose parking lot and actually pick the food up from Mountaineer Food Bank and take it to the church and there's ladies and all up there and they put everything in bags and a lot of times we'll have uh, 40 to 70 families per month. Mm -hmm. This month, and I think this is worth telling about, uh, I'm not trying to get into church stuff, but our church, I'm, I'm not even gonna mention the name of the church, but we are gonna have a banquet for the down and out of the people who are less fortunate than I. There's nobody down and out, but there's people less fortunate than I. The whole spread, man, we're putting the whole spread on for them. So when they come up to get their food, we're going to set them down, and they're going to have a big-time meal, linen, everything, the whole works. Where is that going to be? The church that I go to. Okay. So can we, if yeah, that, well, you I, have, I, I, the I go the to the Berkeley Baptist Church at Berkeley Springs. Okay. And where is that? It's uh, right up by Sheets, first right up on the hill. Okay. And when is it going to be? It'll be the, uh, I pick up food, uh, I think it's about the 24th of this month. Okay. I pick up food on the 21st, I think. Will that be in the paper in case people want to know? No, about it's going to be a surprise. It'll, it'll be a it'll kind of a surprise. In other words, someone might know. You'll let the community know. It, no, it's 
it's basically for the families that are down and out and just need a hand up. Okay. We, we want them to know that they're special, especially in God's eyes, that he cares about them. And that's why uh, the people, it wasn't my idea to come up with this, uh, the ladies of the church said they really want to do something for the food pantry. Mm -hmm. They want to treat these people with respect and dignity that they deserve. And that's what it's going to be about. How, uh, how has Berkeley Springs changed from the time when you were growing up here? Well, you moved in. <laughs> <laughs> that's the point I want to get to, actually, but go ahead. Okay. No, uh, I would say in 72, there was a group of people. I don't, is that when you came? I don't mm, know. 30 years ago or so? No, this was been 40 years ago. Okay. There was probably a group of people who came into Morgan County uh, who wanted another alternate lifestyle. They were sick of the world and wanted to come to Little Berkeley Springs. And they've changed Berkeley a long way, and a lot of it's been good, you know. I can't say it's been bad. And, uh, you know, that's... Did you like it the way it was before then, though? Well, I've enjoyed my... I often say that I ha had a great place to grow up. One summer, we lived in the castle, four of us guys. So we lived in the castle for a summer. You rented? No, we worked there okay. as tour guides. So then we played at night in the castle. And you can only imagine what that was. So, but I'm not going to go into that part. Okay, <laughs> but you touched on a hot button, and that is what people say, the come here's versus the from here's. Well, I, I hope we're now all here. We're just Morgan County. That's, that's, that's what I want. When I first met you, and you've been here forever, so I should have met you, or maybe I didn't meet you before, but... Um, it was downstairs here at the Ice House. Mm -hmm. You had attended one of these Democratic Party, even though they say they were not they were nonpartisan, <clears throat> it's basically Democratic Party resistance to Trump thing. That's what they called the resist movement. Resist movement, right. And you were, you were not in a resistor, but you attended that meeting. I, I can tell you why. Yeah. Okay, I, I seen it in the paper, the resist movement, and I'm thinking, hmm, now they're gonna resist and they're using the ice house as a place to meet, a resist. And I thought, is that fair to everybody in Morton County who doesn't have that privilege? Are they getting a free ride on that? Okay. In other words, free heat, free this, free that, to form a resist movement. And I thought, you know, that's, that's, so I'm going to go up and check it out. And if that's the case, I'm going to try to stop it. I'll be honest with you. And then I realized that, that y'all took up a... Uh, oh, well, I was, I'm not part of them, but I, okay, I was there observing well, th They took up a, uh, had a collection plate there, and they said for rent. I said, okay, man, that, that's a great American way. They was going to help with the utilities and stuff. So meat, do you resist? So I had no problems with it. So, it, you know. And I, yeah, I actually saw you drop some money in the bucket. I don't know about that. Well, I did, but I don't know if you see me. I didn't do it for people to see me. It just happened to be there, and I right. put money on it. But uh, what's wh your problem with the resist people? Uh, well, now they change the name. It's not resist movement anymore. It's the invisible, indivisible, indivisible. Okay. Right. okay. Oh, okay. They're very visible, but it's indivisible. Right. right. What I'm saying, when people have views, they need to put their face to it. Have the, uh, in other words, don't hide under. Now, maybe I misinterpreted that word. Explain to me what the word is again. Indivisible. In other words, we're all together against Trump. Okay. Why? I don't know. Because the man won the election. Why would you be against Because the they, they, they worked to defeat him. They okay. didn't want him to be president. I didn't particularly want Barack Obama to be president, but when he became president, I surely supported him. I never, I was, he was my president for eight years. I never tried to resist him, defeat him, or knock him down. 
And that's, that's the problem that I have with this uh, so-called resist movement, which is actually, if you t take a look around the United States, it has kind of involved in, uh, or enveloped into a, uh, uh, I, not, now I can, I'm not a good speaker, but the uh, Nefita, is that the name of Antifa. Antifa movement. Against fascism. Which they, like the, our unfortunate history in the past, like the Klan and all, these people are wearing hoods. They're not showing their face, just like they did a hundred years ago. And that don't make it right. They're, they have shields and, and clubs that beating stuff out because people want to speak. They won't let them speak. And that's what it started with resist, now it's the end of that. What's next? There, see, in other words, history, if you don't learn from your history, then you have to repeat it. You have no future. Because without history, you have no future. What do you see uh, areas of common? I mean, it, it appears as if alienation and separation is accelerating. That yeah. there's a split in society. It's almost like a new civil war. I mean, it's not, sometimes it's violent, like we saw in Charlottesville. But it's almost like it's a new civil war. Like people can't sit down and talk the way we're talking now and have a conversation about how we move forward together. Why do you think that's happening? Because the uh, left side will not allow the conservatives like myself and other people to speak. They won't, they won't give them the platform to vocalize what they're trying to get across. Like I am a strong believer in history. And that's what, uh, when I was at Timber Ridge School, I tried to teach the young men that, about the history of the United States. And most of them had a complete different of opinion. So I tried to explain some history things. And if you don't allow that to be, like tear down all the uh, monuments and different things that they're doing now. Today, they have to guard Columbus up in New York. They have like 10 police cars because they're afraid they're gonna come in and tear down to Columbus, okay? That's history of our country. And if you, uh, if you don't allow for that, that's like the Taliban what, or the ISIS, what did they do over in Iraq? The first thing they did, because uh, they threw down every Christian church over there, the church in Nivea, you know, the famous church where uh, in, in northern Iraq. But we also tore down Saddam's statue when we went into Iraq. Uh, so there's a, there right. both sides tear down statues now that just, they don't agree now with. Now I happened to be watching that that day. Yeah. The Iraqis were doing it and a tank just happened to go by and they begged the tank to come over and wrap a chain around his neck and the, and the guy in the tank did it. But it was Iraqis that were tearing down his statue. Um, but the focus is really on statues and don't you think there's common ground? I, let me go through a couple issues and tell me where you think there might be common ground. For example, on Vietnam, I sort of sense from what you said earlier in this interview that you weren't really in agreement with the political decision to go into Vietnam. Is that accurate? I didn't know at that point. But just, looking back on it. Looking back, uh, like the Ken Burns uh, movie and stuff, uh, yeah, I can see because I heard it out of Kennedy's mouth. I heard what he said. It wasn't secondary. I listened in good faith, but I heard what he said. He had to keep him there because of the election. Right. And the common, there are common grounds for left-right coalitions. So for example, now before we get to that actually, one of the things you said that I heard you when you came into that meeting downstairs months ago was you didn't, I think people were trashing you on social media for your positions. Did you say something along those lines? No. No, no okay. I, I, I don't even use social media. Okay, yeah. so, but, but you were saying something about how harsh the rhetoric was. Well, it's pretty obvious, yeah. If, if, hey, if you would stand up and say, I voted for Donald Trump, which I did, yeah. you would probably be cursed. You'd probably somebody would curse at you. Right, and in fact, yeah. much of what Trump was saying had a left-right vibe to it 
And that's why he won Wisconsin, Ohio, Pennsylvania. So for example, many people on the left opposed to the trade agreements, NAFTA, GATT, Trump opposed mm -hmm. to the trade. He was actually speaking out, whether he believes it or not, who knows, but he was speaking out against unconstitutional wars in Iraq and so forth. Uh, so uh, against unconstitutional mm -hmm. wars, against corporate welfare, against these trade agreements. Trump was doing that. Trump was doing right, that. Right, so yeah. there is, and he was appealing to the Democratic Party worker base and probably split off. Mm -hmm. He only needed tens of thousands of votes to do to win it and probably did it that way. Don't you think that... But he did it. He did it. No, but I'm saying, <laughs> okay. don't you think that... Um, that common ground that he was talking about and the left talks about is a place where we can come together. That, that too much attention is, be, is focused on areas that split us apart, like the statues, like gays, guns, and abortion. That too much attention is on that to keep us separated, but that we could come together on these issues that would stabilize the society. I would like to see the society stabilized big time, okay? But both sides have to listen and be given the opportunity to talk. Like, I'm given the opportunity right now to talk, okay? And I appreciate that, and that's why I came. Uh, but that's not happening. That's not happening around the country because the left side has gotten so radical that they, they're becoming what, they're becoming, uh, like when somebody hates, if, if, you, if a person hates somebody, eventually you become filled with so much hate, you're just like the person that you hate. And that's what the left is becoming. They won't allow common sense, just, hey, let's talk about it. You know, I don't agree, you know, and, uh, but, I, but I agree that you have the right to disagree. Let's go, to, let's vote about it. Okay, that's what we did in that past election. And I realized it was close and uh, he won by electoral, by strategy. But the bottom line is the Democrats had a terrible candidate. They had an old hag for a candidate that couldn't even communicate with people. If they would have had another Democrat, they would have won. But they didn't, they chose that. So they got what they chose. Correct. And they can't accept that. They, they want to go back and change that. You can't change that. you got to go from today forward. Right. And actually, there are many of us on the other side who are not Democrats, who are independents, who want to find a middle ground, mm -hmm. who believe that the answer to Hillary's question, what happened, is actually her name, Hillary her Clinton. Her name, and it keeps going. She's yeah. out today. And she's well, still, well, and she's she still doing stop. it. So there is a middle ground. There is a middle ground. Oh, where also, we, hey, I, I would like to clarify something. Yeah. When I seen the Republicans get in power and the uh, foolishness that they could not do, I went to the county clerk, and just let me explain that. I got back from Vietnam on a Friday, okay, of 1970. At that point, you had to be 21 years old to vote. Now, soon after that, it was changed to 18. but. At that point, it was 21. On Monday, I went up and re signed up as a Republican. Monday, that was one of my first very priorities because I had thought about that when my service in Southeast Asia. And I signed up. But now, uh, after the first of the year and I seen the stuff was happening, the same old stuff, I'm now an O, other. Other. Right. That's what I am now. I'm no longer Republican. I'm an O. So now I have the opportunity to search both sides and pick who I think is the best person. Right. And that we need an O revolution to over, overthrow both of these, what I believe are both yeah. of these corrupt parties. And I, th I do think the, yeah. the majority of pe voters in the country, by the way, in 2020 are going to be O's. I hope they are. Yeah. That, that'll change things. Anyway, this is just the beginning. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us today. And we hope to continue the conversation and build a, a more peaceful, stable society because 
the violence and the heated rhetoric isn't getting us anywhere. Can't make it. Can't make it. Yeah. Thank you, Tom Yost. And thank you for joining us on This Week in Morgan County.